Hi, this is Robert Greer. This is CSE 588 Milestone 1. I'll start by playing back the demos, and then I'll go over the architecture alongside the output. So uh, running the program, you can start the de first demo by pressing 1. And that's the end of the first demo. You can quit by pressing Q, and then start the second demo by pressing 2. And that's the end of demo two. Press Q to quit the demo and then press escape. And the program exits cleanly with memory tracking passed. Okay, next I'll go over the architecture and the requirements for the milestone. So starting off with the beginning of the demo, we load a bunch of audio assets um, by associating an ID to a file name. This will create a command that gets sent over to the audio thread and then loads them before we start the rest of the demo. So you can see here in the start of the output, we load all of these assets before we start any of the playbacks. The next thing you do is you create an audio sequence for each sound. So in this case, we just have one asset per sequence. And this is a, gonna be a list of assets that are gonna playback stitched together. Um, and so then we take those sequences and we can compose them into a playlist. So a playlist plays back multiple sequences in parallel. And we use that for the song to play A and B on the left and right channel simultaneously. Um, and then we can attach the playlist to an actual sound instance. So this is called a game sound. And that's what the user will use to play back the audio and set the properties. So that's what the setup looks like um, to go over the multi-thread component. So we have the audio thread running here, which is just spinning on its input of commands. And all of these load, uh, calls are going to send over commands to that input queue uh, so that they can be processed on the audio thread. So some of the primitives that I just showed are the audio asset, which is represents a wave. Uh, it's managed by the asset manager. Um, it's composed into audio sequences, which has a linked list of those assets. And it provides an iterator so that the voices can iterate over that sequence without editing it. Then uh, you compose those sequences into something called a playlist. The playlist has the list of sequences, and then it also has a list of voices. So a voice is the class that encapsulates the uh, source voice object. It also has a callback, and it also has an iterator over the sequence. So the idea here 
is the voice callback signals back to the voice when the voice ended. And then the voice will use its iterator to iterate over the sequence and stitch together the audio for the seamless playback. The voice is an interthread object because it's accessed by both the callback and by the audio thread. So it's protected by the handle and returns handle statuses and all the functions have the handle lock macro. So jumping up back to the playlist, it has sequences and voices. And when you start a playlist, it'll iterate over the sequences, create a playlist from the, or create a voice from the voice manager. And then it'll initialize the voice with its respective sequence that it's responsible for playing back. This allows each playback uh, to be, uh, have its properties changed independently. So the playlist is then uh, managed by the prototype manager. This is what the user loads playlists into. Um, and those are static throughout the program. And then those can be copied or assigned to onto the working manager, um, which is represents the manager for the playlists that are actually doing work and managed by sounds. So then we can go to the sound, which has a playlist. And then it also has a back pointer to the user's game sound. So this is the A sound class on the audio thread. And um, it's also managed by a handle and uh, it's managed by the sound call manager, um, which represents the active sound calls. So that's the idea there. Um, we can then go to that game sound, um, which is going to be the sound on the user's side. So here's the game sound. It is also protected by a handle because it's an interthread object. So it has all the handle statuses and all the methods are protected by the handle lock and it has the handle member. And so what it does is uh, it just sets the properties and then sends over a command in mutate uh, over to the audio thread to make sure that the sound on the audio side is up to date with what the user wants on the game sound. And these are managed by the game sound manager. Uh, and all of these managers are derived from manager base, which is the basic object pooling class. All right, next I'll, I'll go over the demos themselves and show how I got the uh, output. So if we go to the first demo, which is called demo controls, um, we start with this timer system um, here, which just signals off these events. So you can play back the sound, you can set properties and play it back. So there's the fiddle. Then I have a helper class to do the linear, the interpolation for panning um, each direction. And then I do interpolation for volume using Delta. And then uh, I do the sound, uh, which has multiple channels, which is the song on the left side and the right side. So I can set those independently like this. And then I can get the current time playing from the sound and print that out. Um, so you can see those printouts there. And then with the channels, I can pause one channel independently of the other and then stop the sound entirely. And then lastly, we have the bassoon where we can create multiple instances of a sound referencing the same assets uh, and play them back on top of each other. So that's the first demo and you can see the output for all of that here. And then jumping down to the second demo, which is the Seinfeld, um, you can see we load up again all the assets for Seinfeld. And then um, what we do is we just play it. And that will automatically start the playback. So it says start playing start. Um, and then after start, it, the callback says now we're playing A. And then we have the panning as well with the timer events being printed out. And it just goes A, A to B, B to C, so on and so forth, all the way to the end. And then it says that the sound's finished playing at the end. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically all of the uh, components of the demo. And thank you for watching.